The Bluetooth device is really too pale. Hello, beautiful people. It's Macy, and welcome back to another episode of Bless, the weekly funding news and variety show where we talk about all things funding, all things Jesus, and all things fun, like eternal damnation. On today's episode, we'll be talking about censorship, Elon Musk, and persecution. We're also going to be baking a casserole with my grandma Myrtle, which we were supposed to do last week, but we had to cut it out for time. But she understood. But anyway, yeah, we're going to bake a casserole with my grandma right now. Well, not literally right now. It's a segment that I filmed and that they're going to like edit into this. But the segment is right now. So please, please, please welcome my favorite and only living grandma in the world, Myrtle. Take it away, grandma. Love you. What do you want me to do? Are you recording? Okay, should I? I'll, I'll walk in, I'll walk in. Okay. Hello, I'm Myrtle. I'm gonna teach you today how to cook a nice meal. They say that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, but good Christian godly men are not fussed. They'll eat almost anything. In fact, if they like things that are too fancy, that's a red flag to me. One time your Uncle Bob said he wanted me to buy him some cashews. I said, I think not. No, that sounds like the devil to me. I'm gonna make a classic favorite, a tater tie casserole. You know, I love to cook and you know, Macy, you better learn to love to cook too because that's what this, your, your role in life is to be the homemaker, to be the help meet. You might marry a prophet, you might marry a searcher, a seeker, you might marry someone who is a carpenter. No matter who you marry, you are the help meet and you help by cooking the meat. You get what I'm saying? Is what I'm saying making sense to you? I hope so. For our tater, oh, I gotta get everything. Oh my gosh. Tater tots. First, you're gonna heat your oven up to 350. All right, you got everything in frame? Where is my spoon? Oh, here it is. I swear, your grandpa wants to come in here and just start moving stuff around. Get some of my last nerve, and I pray about it, I pray about it, I pray about it. Be sweet, be kind, love everybody, but Oh my gosh, you get some carbs. Okay, so what you're gonna do here is you're gonna take your oil, put it in your pan. It's not rocket science, even though rocket science, I'm not so sure about all that. Get some garlic. You can buy whole cloves, but I just buy the pre minced stuff. So just put however much feels right to you. However much the Lord is telling you belongs in your casserole. I like a lot. It's good for your heart. All right, so this is heating up. <sighs> this is heating up. Real interesting. So once that's heated up a little bit, you're gonna add your onions here. Be strict with scripture, but with recipes, just do what you want. You want me to tell the goldfish story for your show? You know, I actually, in our church, became a little bit of a celebrity after this story. Even the local news, they wanted to have me on there for this story, but I, I said no, trying to be humble, trying to be modest, but I'll tell you for your show, Macy, because I love you. All right, so here's the thing about me. I love goldfish crackers. Every day I eat those little goldfish things. They have been my favorite thing forever. I like to eat them one at a time. One day I was eating some goldfish crackers and there was a cracker who had a cross on him and a crown. Oh, this is getting loud. He had a cross and a crown. That was a goldfish cracker from God. God chose me to find that goldfish. He knew I wouldn't eat it. But your dang Uncle Bob ate it. He saw it on the counter and just ate it. It's gone, but it lives in my heart. Once your onions are looking like how these are looking, you're gonna add your meat, okay? All right, so here's your meat. A necessary ingredient in any meal. This is dark in here, let me turn this light on. We're just standing here cooking in the dark. Oh, that's the fan, where's the light? Here we go, hallelujah. Let there be light, that's what they said. I don't like to add a lot of seasonings because I like my things simple, I like them traditional, I like them easy. Real men aren't picky. Ain't nothing less attractive to me than a picky eating man. Like, really? All you need is meat, cheese, potatoes, and something green, and you're good. You asking me for more than that, I'm looking at you sideways. Uh-uh. You're supposed to add cream of mushroom soup, but I forgot to have it, I forgot to buy that because once again, Macy is just popping up in here without warning anybody. So what would Jesus do in a situation where he's, you know, he needs cream and mushroom soup, but he doesn't have it? 
he improvises. He would he would make it some other way. So what I'm gonna do is I put I have some mushroom here, and I figure I'll just add some milk to the meat. It'll be fine. It'll taste all right. We need some sage. Whatever feels right to you. You want more seasoning? Add more seasoning. You want less seasoning? You want less seasoning. What is what feels right to you. As Christians, we are not supposed to go with what feels right, but I think in the kitchen it's okay. All right, so you're old enough to be left unattended by the stove, Macy. I need to go grab some flour. I forgot to get the flour. I add you a fourth of a cup of flour to this. I look weird, might not be making any sense right away, but it will, it will make sense. I promise you that. It's like with God, you know, sometimes what God is doing doesn't make any sense, but then one day you look up and you go, oh, that makes sense, that makes sense. Now we're gonna add our green beans here. You don't like green beans, you can add something else. I've seen people, sometimes they use corn, sometimes they use carrots. You don't have to cook everything all the way, because it's gonna cook in the oven. You know, sometimes in life, we're like the tater tot casserole. Sometimes in life, we're not ready. We think we're ready, we think we know what we want, but sometimes God says to us, you know what, you're not done cooking. There's a lesson in everything, Macy. There's a lesson that God is giving you in every single thing you do. These green beans, a lesson from God. This sage, a lesson from God. The cheese, a lesson from God. It's everywhere, you better be looking. Why would God give you blessings if you're not looking? You look? All right. Oh, I, I forgot, I need the milk. Like I said, normally you would use a can of um, cream of mushroom, but we're just using mushrooms and milk because that's what we got today. It's just gonna have to do. It's just gonna have to do. Milk number one. And milk number two. Mmm, look at that. That looks delicious. Getting it on the floor there. All right. So unfortunately, um, my neighbor, Carol, borrowed my casserole dish and has not given it back yet, which is very rude. So we're just gonna have to cook this in a cake pan. That's what I got, but you know what? We work with what we got here in this house. All right. So, we got our pan. Carol has our casserole dish. All right. I'll show you a close up. Don't that look good? Sounds good. All right, now for the fun part. Cheese. I like a lot of cheese, but maybe you don't like a lot of cheese. But that's okay. You can do it how you want to do it. But in this house, we put a lot of cheese. I hate to get me a bite of something and it don't have cheese on it. And everything else has cheese on it. Mm -mm. No, no ma'am. We need cheese on every part of this thing. Every, everything, evenly. Equal distribution of the cheese, please. Last, but most certainly not least, because it's the name of the whole dang dish, need tater tots. You just line them up here. Now you need, everything else is looking a mess underneath here, but on the surface, we're gonna make it look nice and presentable. You know, never judge something by what it looks like on the surface. Tater tot casserole, looks like it's gonna be organized. It looks like it knows what it's got going on, but then you take a bite, you go down to the deeper levels and it's a mess. Here, Macy, I mean, can you just start doing the dishes and we can just do a, we'll film it when it's, when I'm done? Okay, cause I'm, uh, I'm tired of talking. My grandma, she's something else, isn't she? Mm, I just love that casserole, and I think you're gonna love it too if you decide to make it. Comment below if you try it out. Now it's time for our next segment, which is Funny News. That's right. We're gonna talk about what the fundies have been up to this week. For our first news story, I would like to give a very big congratulations to Jill's son, Philip, who is graduating from being homeschooled and who is now going to college. Specifically, Bible College, which honestly looks like a great time. However, the full experience of this college is not available to men who are divorced or to women, like any good Christian organization. 
For our next bit of news, I want to talk about something that a lot of people in my community have been voicing very strong opinions about, which is legislation that hurts and affects trans people. Whether that is preventing trans children from being able to transition, or whether that is preventing trans students from playing on sports teams of their gender. Most of the bills that have been introduced this year have been aimed at children, because it's always the good Christian way to protect children by attacking them. However, the state of Missouri decided to take it a bit further this week by introducing a bill that would not allow trans people to transition until the age of 25, citing that the brain isn't fully developed until then. Which is really interesting coming from a state where you can legally marry a 16 year old. A lot of these bills all seem to have the same language, and that's not a mistake, and that's not a coincidence. The reason why so many of these bills that target trans people have the same language is because they come from the same place. The same Christian place. The Alliance for Defending Freedom's main mission is to take away the freedoms of anyone who is not a conservative Christian. This is a group of people who is actively working with lawmakers to try to put Christianity into our government. Because the separation of church and state isn't what we Christians want to have. We want to have a Christian state. And as a Christian, even though it says in the Bible that we should not be of the world, um, we're going to participate in world politics. Well, some of us will. I might not be able to because if there's head of household voting, it will be only men. The Alliance for Defending Freedom also states on their website that they are committed to defending free speech. Which is Which what brings us to our next story here. Elon Musk has purchased Twitter for $44 billion. And so many Christian conservatives are so excited for this because he is talking about defending freedom of speech. Good old Elon giving us free speech, but not giving us a free lunch anytime soon. That's the good old American Christian way. Even Governor DeSantis had something to tweet about it. For someone who's banning books and punishing corporations for speaking out against bills that he's presenting, he sure is the epitome of a fighter for free speech. As Christians, we demand no censorship on the internet, except if it's a woman's body or something we don't agree with. Elon Musk is the atheist billionaire who has come to save all of us Christians. The enemy never sleeps. But I do. It's getting really late and it's almost past my bedtime. So it is time for me to call it a night on our show. But thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I cannot tell you, one, how much it means to me that you were watching this show, but two, how excited I am for next week's show because we are going to be celebrating one of the most important holidays of the year, next to Christmas and Easter, obviously. We are going to be having a Mother's Day special. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. But thank you for watching, and remember, you are a light. Comment below if there's anyone specific you would like to see, and I'll see if I can get them on the show. But anyway, have a great night, stay blessed, and I'll see you next time.